I'm all in. You study the wealthiest people on this planet. They find two or three things and they put all their money in those two or three things. They do not invest in 50 things. How many have been told that before? Diversify, diversify, diversify. How many have been told that before? That's not what rich people do. The super wealthy do not diversify. The diversification is a terrible mistake. The super, super wealthy put all their energy, all their time, and all their effort in one or two things, and that's it. Once they get super rich, then they diversify. That's not how they got rich. If you study super wealthy people, they all create wealth in one bucket. Folks, welcome back to Nostalgenomics. That clip was of Grant Cardone. For those of you who don't know Grant, Grant is a real estate billionaire. But that alone doesn't mean we should follow his advice or trust anything he has to say about how the rich live. No, no, not that alone. But there's something that does. Grant puts on what's called 10X growth conferences every single year, where he packs out entire stadiums of people who want to come and listen to him interview some of the most successful investors, entrepreneurs, business owners in all the world. And over the years that Grant's been doing this, he's compiled a wealth of knowledge on how all of the most wealthy, successful people on the planet treat their money and their investments. And that's the reason when Grant says this is how the wealthy people live and invest their money, it might make sense to listen. One of those people being Mark Cuban. Here's what Mark has to say about diversification. So you and make one-way bets. This isn't portfolio balancing you're no, talking about. No, all that asset management, you know, diversification, that's for idiots, right? Because you, because you, can't, you can't diversify enough to know what you're doing. You heard it here first. Diversification is for idiots. You can't diversify yourself enough to know what you're doing. Yet, here in this Pokemon investing, collectible investing space on YouTube, you constantly hear, you need to diversify. Diversify in Pokemon, diversify into other collectibles, diversify into the stock market, diversify into real estate. Spread your wings, throw the eggs in as many baskets as possible as far as the eye can see. But the wealthiest people on the planet tell a very different story. They say basically the exact opposite. They say if you find something that you know more or do better than most anyone else on the planet, to stick with that and go all in. I think most of us here spend the majority of our time researching Pokemon. And most of us watching a channel like mine know Pokemon better than 99 point something percent of the entire planet, if you really think about it. But we're constantly told to diversify. Throw your money in the stock market. Throw it into a 401k, IRA, Roth IRA. How well do you know the stock market? How well do you know the stocks that you're investing in? How well do you know how the funds work and how they're managed? And how well do you know about all the taxes and fees and the timelines you have to keep your money locked up for? And how much do you pay attention to that? How much do you know about real estate? How much do you study it? I guarantee nowhere near either one of those as much as you study and know Pokemon. Here's another question. How much success have you had in real estate or the stock market compared to Pokemon? I know myself, I've had far more success in the Pokemon hobby, and I'm sure most of you watching this video have too. So why are we told to constantly leave that behind and move somewhere else? Because we're told by the wealthiest, most successful people on the planet to, if you found something you do better and know better than anyone else, stick to that and go all in. It doesn't matter if it's modern sealed, vintage, slabs, flipping, whatever it is that you do very well, that you've had consistent, higher than average returns year over year over year, why would you not stick with that? Let's listen to one of arguably the best investors of all time, Warren Buffett, and what he has to say about diversification. We think diversification is, as practice generally, makes very little sense for anyone that knows what they're doing. Uh, the diversification is a protection against ignorance. So Warren Buffett, one of the best investment minds to ever live. You just heard it from his words, not mine. You don't diversify if you know what you're doing. It's really just a hedge against ignorance. Now, what does he mean by that? Ignorance as in you don't care. You don't want to know. You just want to get up, go work your eight hours, come home and enjoy your life 
and not have to think about investments because you don't like to think about money and you just want to throw a certain portion of your income in a bunch of different mutual funds in a 401k that are considered safe because of their performance over a certain amount of years and hopefully in 40 plus years of your career you'll have enough left over to retire on. But if you know what you're doing it doesn't make sense. I would consider most anyone watching this video you probably have a good idea of what you're doing in this Pokemon market. And so you have to ask yourself, I just watched three billionaires tell me that the rich and wealthy, they go all in on what they believe in. When they find something that they do better than 99% of people on the planet, and they know more about than 99% of people on the planet, they go for it. They put in the effort, they take that risk, and when it pays off, pays off big. And one of the things that Grant said on that first clip that stuck out to me is the wealthy, they don't diversify on the way up. They only diversify once they reach the top because they diversify to protect their wealth. They don't diversify to get wealth, right? You don't get wealth by diversification. You protect it. And so depending on where you're at in your life, Maybe you are at the point where you have enough wealth and you just want to protect it. But if you're not, and you're still at that point of looking for growth, and you know Pokemon better than anything else, it makes sense because another rule you constantly hear by investment experts is don't invest in things you don't understand. I could have found just as many clips of millionaires and billionaires telling you that. Most people don't completely understand the stock market. They don't completely understand real estate. They don't understand all the fees and all the laws and all the rules. And they don't understand, you know, what stocks or what houses to pick. You, you don't have that knowledge because why? All your time and energy is spent researching Pokemon product. That's what you know. You're constantly told to invest in things you know. So why are you letting people pull you away from things that you know? Just because people of varying levels of success here on YouTube may say you need to diversify it because they diversify, it doesn't mean it's right. And that's the biggest issue I think going on right now is you hear a bunch of people say the same thing and it becomes almost like common knowledge like, oh, of course that's right. But it's not. It, it's not. We see the most wealthy people, the multimillionaires, the billionaires on the planet all doing something different, and yet we question it. Now I get it. It's not going to be the safest play out there. Of course not. The biggest rule is, you know, risk-reward ratio, right? The more risk you put in, the bigger your reward. And that just comes down to where you're at in life. But I know with me, I've had the most success in my life in any sort of investing in Pokemon. I've never made thousands of percent gain anywhere else in, in real estate or in the stock market or anything else. So why, just because a bunch of people online tell me that it's risky or it's a bad year or it's going to crash or it's not going to last or, you know, compared to all these, these weird different collectibles of the past, why would I let that scare me? That's like someone who believes in the stock market letting someone tell them about how Bed Bath & Beyond just went bankrupt or Blockbuster bankruptcy or all the crashes and depressions in the stock market scare them. Or it's just like people letting the 2008 real estate crash or, or different areas that crash around the country at, at different times in real estate scare them from investing in real estate, right? It's the same concept. So guys, as I always push in my videos, do your own research. Make your own decisions for yourself. And don't let other voices influence you. And at very least, if you're going to let voices influence you, maybe you should at least take advice from some of the richest, most successful people on the planet. And listen to what they're saying. And maybe take that into account with some of the YouTube advice you get. That's all I got for today. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to the channel. I'll be back here in a new video soon. I'm out.